McDaniels has the loose ball for the Huskies. Stewart had his arm down, wasn't straight up and down. What a play Ooh. there. Got a foul. Behind the back, takes a bump and finishes. Oh, he reminds me a little bit of a, a more skilled Jonathan Isaac. Mike Schmitz of ESPN. We're here with Jaden McDaniels, a 6'10 wing out of University of Washington. Uh, Jaden, appreciate you taking the time, man. I appreciate you. Thank you. Uh, so what do you think it is you could be, you could bring to an NBA team? Like, how do you envision your role at the next level? Uh, really, uh, just coming in as a rookie, just uh, doing it, whatever it takes to win and whatever, like, the coach has for me. Just, if that's from making open shots or playing the hardest defense, playing as hard as you can, or guarding the toughest player every night, I feel like to do whatever I can to help the organization win and the team win. Yeah, no, that's the, per the perfect mentality. And I think your yeah. brother has been a, a really good example for you, right? Because yeah. I know you guys had kind of a different path. You know, he was a, a second round pick, and but I I'm here in LA. And so I was able yeah. to see him a ton at San Diego State. And, you know, he always played so hard. He had a great nose for the ball, um, super, super active. Yeah. And now he's clearly, you know, carved out a role for himself in Charlotte. What have you learned from kind of watching his progression, his rookie year, and, and what has he kind of told you maybe some advice to take moving on to the next level? Uh, really just watching how you said, like, noticing he always playing hard. Like, that's something I had to learn how to do, like, growing up and uh, coming over my ears to just play hard. So I just kind of took that from him. And then, like, some things he told me just uh, never stop working, really, because, you know, you could be in the G League how he was, and he just told me, like, if you put in the work, the time's going to come. Like, just it's not going to be as fast as you want it, but, you know, the time's different for everyone. All right, we're going to dive into some of your film here. And, and like okay. I said, we're going to look at, uh, you know, some areas, really every area of your game, offensively, defensively, um, you know, some areas where you've been really, really strong, and then ask you about some areas you're still trying to improve. Uh, so before we get into kind of the categorical uh, elements of your game, uh, these are two of my favorite clips uh, of the season okay. from you, okay? Uh, yeah. What do you remember about this play? Uh, just uh, momentum rip to the, to the baseline and just had to go finish it, really. <laughs> yep. And, and what I love about it, it's kind of subtle, right? But I love how your hands and feet are ready, you're engaged, you're ready to attack on the catch. Uh, how much of that, how much has that been an emphasis for you? Because in high school, it's a lot of times, roll the balls out, let me just go get mine, especially when you're the best player on the team. How much have you had to adjust, like playing off of other guys and, and being quick and decisive with your movements? Uh, I know, like, at first it was hard just, like, playing, like, the speed of the game. But as I moved on, I kind of just got, like, in the flow of it just, also noticing like in this play you see like knowing like who's in the game like mm -hmm. there's no one in corner so like that's an easy rip like yeah. opportunity or like even if there was someone there there would probably be other openings so i say saying just being ready and just staying locked in during the game really helps yeah definitely and, and you could see you know those those wow moments from you this season and then i have one on the defensive end as well what do you remember about this play oh uh, yeah come across the middle and just had to take it out the air from now, from now on. Yep, yeah. and seeing a, a guy who's a center size, right, and just going at him and, and playing with that ferocity, uh, that intensity, you know, I think that's what scouts want to see from you, right? All right, those are some of your highlights, but uh, I think in the half court, offensively, at least early on in your career, it's your ability to shoot the ball that's going to get you on the court along with yeah. your defense, right? Um, so when you're shooting the ball at a high level, what are some of the things that you're doing? Uh, I feel like just having good balance and mm -hmm. uh, also just have being shot ready with your hands and then just keeping your jump shot like on that straight line, like mm -hmm. uh, not to the side or anything, just making sure it's super tight. Yeah, and I think you were 34% from three this year, but if you look at your catch and shoot numbers, you know, they're really, really good. And, and anytime I've seen you shoot the ball in practice, in high school, during games and warm-ups, you know, I've always thought you have a chance to be a high-level shooter. And, and I think that's a great example right there. Like you said, catching in rhythm, on the hop, uh, really, really easy, simple, repeatable stroke. And I think yeah. we're going to continue to see that from you, um, you know, at the NBA level. And then again, John Isaac, not a guy who's a high-volume three-point shooter, still yeah. improving. But from the corners, he's become really good, right? And, and kind of a similar look, just, just yeah. catching on the hop, um, easy rhythm into it. And then even Ingram, right? So we know him so much for you know, his ability to play with the ball and, and go yeah. get a bucket, right? But he's really had to evolve into a guy who can catch and shoot. Um, how, how closely have you followed his progress? Uh, I followed it a lot just, like, off of watching him from, like, his rookie year to now, just of him, like, growing to be all-star. 
just like uh, he's more patient with his game and it's just not jump shots. Like uh, he's looking for more as well. I mean, like just getting hit one time, you're just not pulling up. You're really just having other moves to get to the basket. Yep, exactly. And he's had to be a guy who can also play off of others right now. He's got yeah. Alonzo, he's got Zion, he's got guys who can create with the ball. Um, so he's had to become a better, you know, standstill three point shooter. And mm -hmm. I think you can look a lot like that from the corners. And then even above yeah. the break, um, I mean, this is picture perfect, right? Yeah. On the hop, yeah. in rhythm, money. Um, so I think you're a guy who can be in the corners. You can be above the break. You can even pick and pop to space a little bit if you're at that yeah. small four spot. Um, and then if they run you off the line, what can you do here? What's your read here? Uh, just like sometimes moves to get, just get to my spot and raise. Like mm -hmm. I'm 6'9", so like not very many people could block my jumper. So I just see a smaller defender and just want to get to my spot on that one and just raise over the top. Um, yeah. You know, one thing I think you can continue, all players can continue to work on is just decision making in these type of situations, right? Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I know there's only like five seconds on the shot clock. You had to get this up. Um, but I'm just curious, what are your reads as you get downhill here? Like, what are your options? What, what's going on in your head? I have uh, Amir Wright. He's sitting in the corner. I feel like if I take a couple more bounces towards the baseline, yep. I could be able to whip that with my left hand. Or even uh, if two helps uh, off of Nas, that could also be one too. Yeah, exactly. No, I think that's perfect. And again, this is late clock. I know you had to go get a bucket. Um, but like you said, you could get all the way to the rim, lefty skate pass, uh, you, maybe it's if, if Isaiah Mobley really helps, it's a quick drop off to Isaiah yeah. or go try to put a guy on a poster, right? Get to the free throw yeah. line. Uh, yeah. and, and so I think, you know, you're going to continue to grow in, in all those areas. Um, but overall, your ability to, you know, shoot it off the catch, get downhill, I think fits perfectly in today's game. Um, all right, we talked about you playing out of spot ups, attacking, getting downhill, quick decisions, all that. And I think that's early on going to be a big part of your mm -hmm. game. And then the last piece, I think when we're talking about like rookie year, second year, um, is being really active off the ball, right? Whether it's running the floor, um, whether it's, you know, relocating in, in different situations. And then here's taking you back to the McDonald's oh, scrimmage. What do you remember about this about this game? Uh, this was the scrimmage game. Yep. Uh, it was pretty good. It was just super competitive. I feel like we were just all out there just trying to go have fun. You know, I think each team had to come up with this dub in this game too. <laughs> yep, yep. And, and so this is just a window into – you know, the fact that you can move off the ball and make these reads, uh, what do you see here? Or uh, just like, uh, we call it, me and Ross call it like a road runner across the, across the key. Yeah. Just uh, like making the eye contact of the passer, just knowing when he's getting ready to pass, just you could cut across an open area. It yep. makes it easier for yourself. Yeah, exactly. And you see Khalil Whitney's kind of napping, right? And, and yeah. you can take advantage of that. And then the last piece of it, I think, where your brother has been really good at, John Isaac has been really good at, is just being an active offensive rebounder, right? Um, this, yeah. These little things that don't always show up in the box score, this time it does. Um, but take me through this. Do you remember this play? Oh, yeah. And seeing Raekwon ride right open, I'm, I mean, if I, and Raekwon's open, you know, I got to give it to him. Yeah. I feel like just trusting my teammates, though, I feel like that's a big part, just uh, having their trust and thinking your teammates going to knock down every shot they shoot. I feel like that also helps. No, no question. And I think it starts with your energy getting to the offensive glass, right? 50-50 yeah. balls. Uh, and, and this is a coach's dream. Late in the game, less than two minutes in the game, you're down one. These are winning yeah. plays, man. You won this game? No, I, we actually end up losing this Okay. Game. Yeah. Yeah, but even so, that's that's a winning play. That's gonna Your coach is going to feel comfortable looking down the bench and putting you in the game if he knows you're going to bring that energy, right? Yeah. yeah. And I agree it, with you. So, all right. So, we've talked about... You playing off the ball, right? And, and doing all those things that maybe you're going to be asked to do earlier in your career. Uh, but I think one of the things that makes you so unique is the fact that you can really handle at your size. And, and I think a lot of that shows up in transition also. Um, how comfortable are you? How comfortable are you in these kind of grab and go situations? Uh, really, I'm real comfortable just being able to have the confidence of grabbing the rebound and just pushing the ball up the court and just uh, having the vision of seeing everyone and being that selfish to make the right play. Yeah, definitely. And, and we can, we've can we seen it with you as a jump shooter, getting to the rim, uh, creating for others. Uh, what do you remember about this play? Uh, Isaiah came, set a screen, I just reject. I think he iced it kind of. Yep. But then I just seen an opening. But I also could have hit uh, Amir in the corner because his man is deep paint, low man. So that could have been something else too. 
Yep, but even so, I think just to show that you know you're comfortable changing speeds, changing directions, and you know I think you're going to be a guy who can make pull up threes and transition at some point yeah. too, um, just because you know you can shoot the ball and you got that handle. Um, you know there were times when maybe you could have get gotten all the way to the rim, right? Yeah. Um, what do you see here? Uh, just I feel oh you know in this one I think like something I've learned and been taught is just keep going like keep attacking until a man actually stops you. Just like yep. I feel like on this play I was just like predetermined. I was already knowing like this is what I'm gonna do if I get to that spot I just pull up. But I feel like I could also hit Isaiah if like he has him beat by the time I got to the three point line. Yeah, and it, it maybe it size him up, hit him with an in and out, hit him with yeah. a euro, right? Try to keep him off balance. Um, and using your length, athleticism to get to the rim. And, and one of the guys who's best at that uh, is Pascal Siakam. Yeah. He's grab and goes. Have you watched him much? Yeah, I watched him also. Just um, just how hard he plays and like his multiple effort mentality, kind of. Yep, exactly. And, and he, you know, doesn't come from much, right? I mean, yeah. he was multiple years at New Mexico State. Um, you know, was was nothing out of high school yeah. from Cameroon and had to play in the G League. And now, I mean. He's on his way to becoming yeah. a potential MVP candidate, yeah. right? So everyone's yeah. got their own path. Yeah. All right, yeah. so we, we've talked about the grab-and-go stuff, right? Now in the half court. And again, this is maybe year three, year four, uh, you know, similar to a lot of these guys. Like Jason yeah. Tatum, right? Like he initially had to play off of other stars. He was more of a catch-and-shoot guy. His rookie yeah. year waited his turn. And now he's one of the you know yeah. biggest stars in the game, right? And so as you kind of shine in that role, then you get more freedom to – you know, play pick and roll, play ISO. Um, so I think the key to being a really good pick and roll scorer is just being able to shoot off the dribble, right? Yeah. Um, what's What's your read here? Um, and I know uh, the defender went under the screen, so this this an open shot, so I just take it. Perfect, and and, and that's what you got to force these guys to do, right? You got to force yeah. them over screens, over the screen. and, and then you're playing two on one. Then you're using your IQ, your your fluidity, your agility, and you can see it here out of the DHO. Um, as you come off, what are your options? Uh, I have a. I could kick back to Nate, or even just, just kind of probe, just to wait to see what develops, or even the kick out to Jamal on the right side. Yep. But even so, I think that's perfect. I, I think this is just showing the fact that you can score it at all three levels out of pick and roll, right? If they go yeah. under, okay, you make them pay. If they go over, you got the pull up, you got the floater, you can get all the way to the rim. Um, and so I think you're perfectly built to be a guy who can score at all three levels, you know, in, in the NBA when, when you're given that opportunity. So we've gone through the pick and roll stuff. We've gone through playing off the ball. Uh, you know, something we really saw from you in high school was just your ability to create in one-on-one -on -one situations. And, and like I said, that might not come maybe till year three, year four in the NBA, who knows. Um, but I think you can really be a threat in those type of situations. So when you're sizing a guy up like this, right, in this situation it's Zeke Naji, uh, what's going through your head? What are kind of the, some of the options you're going through as a scorer? Kind of just like seeing like the space I have, if I'm going to be able to drive or where the defense is really at. Uh -huh. And like on this one, I see like I have no, I have a little opportunity to go right, but Josh is still on that side. So... I feel like uh, just like a little hezzy pull up, you know, just kind of like my go to move. So yep. I just had to win to that one. Yeah, and that yeah. makes some of the best scores, right? We've seen yeah. it from obviously KD is like an alien. I mean, he's, yeah. we've never seen anything like that. But even <laughs> yeah. with Ingram, with, with Tatum, you know, and, and that's a big uh, Seattle trait, right? You got to have yeah. the hezzy pull. You got to have to, man. <laughs> Jamal got one, a nice one too. So, how are, yeah. why, why are, and not to get off topic, but, why do Seattle players play a certain way? I feel like it's kind of like kind of a chip on your shoulder, really. It's just like because we don't get to get out to like all we're like we're so far away from everything, mm -hmm. and it's so like when you get that time, it's just like you ain't just go ball out, go show it all, like really. Yeah, yeah no, for sure. I, I remember going to uh, um, Kevin Porter's high school, oh, uh, Rainier yeah. Beach, and, 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 and I saw an open run there, and it's like Jamal is playing with. You know, yeah. eighth graders, former vets, high school guys, like, and you yeah. guys just get up and down, get up and down yeah. and play a lot of basketball, right? And that's how you get better. Um, so yeah. you can definitely see it in, in your game. And I think that's what really sets the table for you, being able to make those hezzy pulls, right hand, left hand, at your size. I mean, that's pretty special. And, again, that's something you see from Ingram, right? Yeah. And, and it's just rhythm. It's timing. And then, okay, if you're a threat in those situations, then you can play off of that, right? Mm -hmm. Just give him a little... Perks of like how he faked the hezzy. Yeah. And he just blew right by. Yeah. 
just making the man respect your game kind of really. Exactly, and, and being able to shoot the ball off the dribble sets the table for everything, and then and then yeah. you get your blow by, and kind of similar here, right? What do you see here? Yeah. Me trying to just set up the ISO because I see I already see the middles open. It's just yep. getting that set up really to get there. Yep, exactly, and because you're a threat to make that hezy pull, then he's got to respect it. He kind yeah. of bites on it. You get downhill to the rim and draw the foul. That's perfect. Yeah. Um, and then this is kind of more of a handoff situation, but this is an NBA move, man. What what goes into this? I would say just uh, just feeling him like kind of like knowing he has to kind of get in front of me already. I have him beat a little bit, mm -hmm. and then when I spill him on my side, just just pulling it back, just to create a little space and have a opening for the shoot. Yeah, being sharp with your footwork, uh, being sharp with your exchange from your from your handle to your pull-up. Uh, and then Ingram, again, is a guy who can play off of that to get downhill, too. Um, yeah. What do you like about this? It's just, like, him absorbing the contact, like being the first one to make the hit. Yep. And then I feel like that's what helps him get through that play a lot, I think. Yep, exactly. And then a similar deal from you. Um, you know, not exact, but right to left cross, get downhill, yeah. get into the body. Uh, what do you What do you see here? Uh, just how you say get into the body and then just kind of just knowing like just raise right over like his he can test but like my hand is just still over here so it yep. just makes it easier knowing your length and using yeah. it to the fullest ability now the last thing offensively right i think is is playing through contact and this is something that that ingram improved yeah. so much at uh you know from his days at duke even uh to now um so i don't know if you remember this play i know you're kind of yeah. off balance um what do you see here uh, it's just like me kind of just going into the crowd and then also not uh, waiting for my teammates to space, like deep corner. I feel like also knowing that like Sam, he's not like a three-point threat. They're not going to just uh, go out to him. So also letting CJ be able to help on um, that's on me too. Right. No, for sure. And, and again, some of it's a decision-making thing. Um, but I think as you get stronger, you'll be able to just – you know, play, yeah. get your angle, keep him on your hip, or explode past him, take those bumps, yeah. um, and you see it on this play. What do you remember about this? Uh, just being with, like, hitting first. That's what, because yep. he's strong, dude. Like, he was guarding me most of the game. Like, he, you let, he lets you know he's there, so just hitting him first kind of helped. Yeah, definitely. Uh, that's a big-time move right there. And like yeah. I said, that's skinny strong, right? Um, mm -hmm. Just putting your shoulder into him, absorbing the contact, then yeah. the dunk, and then let him know about it, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, but that's an energizing play, man. Um, so defensively, you guys played yeah. so much in the zone this year, right? Yeah. Uh, and, and I think Matisse Thibel is a guy who's proven, like, hey, I can play in the zone, and then I can get to the NBA and still be one of the best yeah, wing defenders. Um, so how do you think you'll translate uh, to the NBA level defensively? Uh, defensively, I feel like uh, just guarding my man, I feel like I'll be pretty good at just because – being super competitive, I feel like just not letting your man score and like having that in your mind, I feel like that helps. But also just, I feel like, like over the years, it's getting stronger. I would like be better and better as, as strength comes on. No, for sure. I agree. And, and, you know, you mentioned it earlier, like your motor and yeah. your willingness to mix it up over the years has like improved each and every year. And, yeah. and you had so many great moments this year, whether it's getting steals, getting blocks. I love this possession. I think you guys played man, maybe this whole game yeah. against Ball State. Um, but just your activity, right? Picking them up mm -hmm. early. Um, what are you trying to do here? Just disrupt them a little just, bit? Yeah, just really. I also have like a little thing just to pick up 94 feet. Like that's like, like it's just fun playing defense. I like it. So it's like being competitive with it is like kind of having a chip on your shoulder, like not letting your man score. Yep, exactly. And, and you take them out of their offense completely. Yeah. Uh, they're trying to get into their set, and now they're all mm -hmm. junked up. Yeah. So I think you're a guy who can defend multiple positions in the NBA. And as you continue to fill out your frame and all that, um, you know, whether it's point guards or wings. Uh, and then here, looking back at the McDonald's game, um, guarding Khalil Whitney, what, what, is, what type of player is he? Uh, he's a real good player, like able to score at like all three levels, and he's super athletic. I would say, yeah. You know, just I feel like on this play, just knowing like uh knowing the scout, and then just knowing like uh the distance of how far I am to be able to uh, corrupt his shot. Really. Yeah, that's perfect. Like you said earlier, uh, you have such great length that you can give guys a little bit of space. And then you can still hand contest, right? Yeah. Uh, and he's a guy who likes to get downhill. You do a really good job of kind of gapping him and forcing the jump shot. And then here again in the mid post, um, you know, just using your size 
And then look at the length, right? Mm -hmm. like still hand still there be able to contest yep exactly and, and so i had to go uh into the archives to see some one-on-one -on -one oh, defense yeah. just because you guys played <laughs> so much zone so but long. yeah but no i think i mean you, you'll be able to do it you know at a high level and and you're seeing more nba teams even play some zone too yeah. so you got the best of both worlds right <laughs> um but no definitely i think uh jonathan isaac like you said is maybe the perfect guy to watch uh defensively and, you know, we'll have a few clips of him here against Giannis, uh, against Siakam, against Harden. How would you guard Giannis if you are on the floor? If I'm on the floor? In this I'm situation. Give, in this situation, I would say I'm going to, like, I would have to give him a little bit of distance just, yep. just off knowing his uh, skill set, but also being a contest. But uh, I would say... It's like keep my hands active hands really just yep. so I can have a chance to block the stop block the shower if he shows the ball be able to strip it from him. Yeah, that's exactly that's yeah. perfect. And like you said, he's not a great perimeter shooter yet, yeah. right? He's a freight train to the rim. So you can see Isaac here. He gives him space, keeps him in front, stays down, and then like you said, he's never gonna bite on those fakes, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. and, and so he does a great yeah. job using his length against you know MVP, and then here against Siakam. Um, really good job just kind of sitting down, yeah. sliding. What, what do you like about this? And just, like, him not gambling. I feel like I never see him just trying to go reach and steal it on defense, just being super disciplined. And then uh, just, like, how the distance it is. Like, he's basically kind of at the free throw line when he was at the three-pointer, and he could still probably contest from there. Exactly. And that and that's it, right? You giving yeah. yourself the right amount of distance, knowing who you're playing. Uh, so I think again, like I said, with your length, your feet, you can be a guy who's who's similar in that regard. Um and then closeouts. So you're in a lot of closeout situations in that zone. Yeah. Um what are you looking at here? What's what's your role in this situation? Uh just to not let my man go middle mm -hmm. uh, and just send him back to the baseline for Claude to help. Yeah, and, and again, this this is really good. I mean you're there to help on the roller, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah. you get the tag, and then you're there on the flight of the pass, move your feet perfectly, and then perfect mm -hmm. contest, right? Yeah, contest, yeah. And that's great. And, and I think you can be a guy who covers ground really impressively. Uh, as you can see here on this play, you get the block. What, what happens here? Uh, just knowing that I have, like, a man behind me, but also knowing that the wing is my responsibility, too. And then bond time, just being a good shooter, just having to respect it, too. Yep, yeah. and, and you can just see how much... How much ground you covered there? Um, now, one thing, a little bit, uh, some foul trouble this year, right? Yeah. Uh, what happens here? Uh, I feel like I gave him the wrong angle. Like I let him go middle instead of just force him to the baseline to like where there's rarely any space to like where he could create. And but it looks like maybe you tweaked your ankle a little bit yeah. here. Did, did you 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 played through some injuries this year? Oh yeah, like uh, early in Pac-12 star, I had. Uh, sprained my ankle and then it was just like I sat out one game versus Oregon State and then see how it was and uh I wasn't really gonna play but like you know it's just competitiveness in me like loving basketball and just wanting to help my team win I kind of just fought through it through the season and as it got better as it went away like I started playing better started feeling like myself so all right, as we finish up here, before we get you out of here, some of the off-ball okay. stuff, okay? Um, I think you're a guy who can have, you know, get steals, blocks, be active, all that. Um, what's been an emphasis for you off the ball defensively? Is there anything you've been looking at? Uh, really just, like, kind of being locked in the game and seeing, like, who's in your area. Like, just playing the zone, like, knowing your area and knowing your coverages. I feel like that helps. And then, like, I always say multiple effort mentality. Like, uh, just also flying around the court helps. Yep, definitely. And, and that, that effort, that energy can cover up, you know, any other mistakes for sure. Um, so what's it, earlier in the year, like, what, what's your role when you're here? What, what should you be doing in uh, this? This role, like, really, you've got to read uh, the point guard at the top. So, like, uh, if he comes, like, across, like, uh, on the side of the right on the elbow, mm -hmm. and that would be my uh, – that would be my responsibility. But if he's, like, in the middle towards, that would be Marcus's. And then anything, like, that gets winged, I'm supposed to tag and then yep. take away the corner so they can't get an easy corner pass. Yeah. So yeah. would this be you or is this Isaiah? Uh, this right now, that would kind of – that's kind of both of us. Like, I should have my hands out, like, because being able – I've stole plenty of passes like that before. So it's like, I should – that's kind of on me. No, for sure. And, and yeah. even, like, when this guy cuts through, right – 
initially, yeah. maybe even giving him a little bit yeah, of a bump. Yeah, yep. yeah. It just being active with that, right? And using your hands, showing your hands, because this is what it can look like here earlier in the year. This is just energy, effort. Look, you're on the balls of your feet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, uh, that's yeah. it, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. And, and I think that's what it can look like. Um, but you've shown this too. Like we showed earlier, we'll end it with this. A willingness to go at guys, right? Yeah. And give me that. Yeah. So that type of mentality, um, that's, you know, that's Jaden McDaniels. That's when you're, yeah. you're a dog and you're competing defensively and you're making winning plays. Um, I think you're going to make your presence felt in the NBA, you know, if yeah. you're doing things like that. So um, I guess just winding down here and then we'll let you go. Um, what are you looking to accomplish in this pre-draft process? Uh, and how do you view the draft? Like, is it, hey, you know, I, I, I need to be a top 10 pick or it's about fit. How, how do you view all that? Uh, well, right now, just pre-draft, I would say just um, getting, like, making sure my shot is right and very consistent just of a long 82 games and just having that same form every time. And then I would say getting stronger just to uh, be able to play with how physical the game is now and just the bigger guys. And then just uh, all-around game, just trying to be for, like, the years to come, just to keep it in keep it in my bag, I would say, just working on, like, pull-ups and hezzy pull-ups, things like that. But also, I'll say, if I look on the draft, like, of what pick I go or anything, I feel like the right fit or the right team for me, like, that has good player development and things like that to help me be the just, best Jaden McDaniels, I feel like that would be the best fit for me. Yeah, no question. And, and so, Jaden, I think you're, a, you know, an, an example that not every player has the same path, right? Like, you're, you go from – you know, ranked outside the top 50 yeah. to then the top five to then, you know, like you said, maybe some ups and downs your, your freshman season. But I think ultimately, you know, you're one of the most talented players in this draft, mm-hmm. um, you know, at 6'10 with your ability to shoot, handle, pass, uh, and then defend. And so, you know, I think uh, bringing this mentality that, that you've shown through this of, um, you know, playing hard all the time and yeah. being a dog, being a competitor is really going to help you at the next level. So uh, really appreciate you taking the time, man. Appreciate you too. All right, thank you. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.